Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game to the Comfort video, we have three pieces of news for you. The first we're going to be starting out with is Power Color, because they're teasing a new card, a Red Devil. So there is some questions of whether it's either a 580 or Vega, we'll get into that in just a moment, as well as Intel's KB Lega G series of processors, which actually sports HBM2 of all things. And then we're going to finalize the video with next generation of memory known as DDR5. That's right, we're finally moving on to that. I also want to start this video out by saying that I'm not on camera this one because, you know, news videos, I don't know if you guys want me on video for it. I've asked a couple of times previously and some people say yes, some people say no, so do hit me up on uh, social media. As you know, the last couple of days I have been on camera for larger pieces of news and, um, you know, technical analysis, so do you want me on that for these type of videos as well? Let me know. Anywho, oh, you can do that on either social media, replying to this, the comments on this, uh, well, video, or you can go to facebook.com slash redgamingtech and let me know there as well. Anyway, let's start, shall we? Uh, we'll start out with Power Color and the Red Devil first, because quite frankly, it's the quickest of the three pieces to go through. Well, other than the images, it's a bit ambiguous what this is. Um, it's most likely, I don't want to overhype you, so it's most likely going to be the 580 series of cards, if I'm totally honest. The reason I say that is because Vega has been, well, somewhat hidden from AMD. All they're saying to us is it's soon, and it's a bit like, well, when soon? Is it Valve time soon, or is it, you know, normal person type of level of soon? What we do understand is the 500 series is going to launch mid this month, so if you're watching that in some distant part of the galaxy or in the future, that's April 18th, 2017, of course. It does sport a dual fan design, which is very similar to the uh, RX 470 Red Devil, but obviously has slightly larger fans, which would make some sense. We don't see power connectors, which doesn't necessarily preclude their, well, you know, addition to the board, it just means that we can't get any sense of what type of power draw we're going to be seeing. Normal stuff. Um, just wait, basically, on this one to see what type of performance it is, whether it is actually Vega, but I'm probably going to, once again, assume it's going to be the 580. Whether there's any tweaks to the Polaris Silicon, so I guess you could say it's like Polaris 1.2 or whatever, we just don't know. Um, the rumours are that it's essentially the same piece of silicon, just with slightly better manufacturing and slightly higher clock speed. Therefore, it would be the equivalent of you taking a regular 480 and running at about 100 megahertz faster. Whether that is the case, or whether we get, for example, higher clock speeds, because there are rumours that it has additional power connector there, so... Or rather, it switches from a 6-pin to an 8-pin, so obviously it has more power draw. Therefore, theoretically, it can overclock a little bit better. We just don't know. We'll have to just wait. What is very intriguing to me, however, is Camp Intel. Now, there are two reasons I find this particular rumor rather interesting. The first one is that, well, HBM2, tasty, tasty, tasty. And the second is that AMD might be involved, providing the GPU. Now... As usual, take some of the stuff as a pinch of salt. I do not want to sell this as fact, but according to Benchlife and a couple of other sources, they are definitely working on something because we have at the very least a roadmap which is confirming that Intel are preparing the latest KB Lake G processors. So these will feature advanced technologies which do away with the older stuff seen on consumer line of products. And it's still, however, going to be utilizing a 14NM process. So it's going to essentially have a PCIe link directly to a GPU which is on the same piece of silicon along with fast HBM2 memory. Now, this is very cool because this is Intel's way of jumping into heterogeneous type of architectures. It also does away with the large silicon interposer, which is something that we would see, for example, on Fiji. Now, I do remember in an interview with Robert Halleck that this is actually one of the hardest parts of the board to create, or rather of the silicon to create. If you don't know what an interposer is, it's essentially, you can think of it as the wires which connect the GPU core to the HBM memory itself. So in other words, they're basically just little, you know, um, wires that literally just, you know, connect. There's like thousands of them if you have, you know, the requisite GPU. For example, uh, Fiji has like 4,096-bit bus, so it has like 4,096 wires which are all coming through thanks to this interposer or interposers, depending on, you know, the architecture. I, uh, 
Intel are not doing that. Instead, they are using EMIB, which stands for Embedded Multi-Die Interconnect Bridge. It's basically, um, well, at least according to the company, I'm using the company's verbiage, not my own, more elegant interconnect for a more civilized age. Okay, um, okay, I'll let Intel and uh, AMD fight with that one. I'm not going to comment. But essentially, it's a very small bridge die, which allows multiple routing layers. Theoretically, this saves the um, size and also makes it cheaper compared to the um, traditional TSV, which is once again what uh, AMD have been using previously. Now, what we understand the TDP of these processors is about 65 to 100 watts. I say about because obviously until we actually get them, we don't know. There are a couple of questions. What we can understand, and this is based upon bench life, we are looking at a 4 um, core configuration at max with the 100 watt. Now, the really weird thing about all of this, uh, other than the fact that we're going to be seeing HBM2, is that, well, there is Radeon IP integration. At least that's what some people are reporting. Now, I don't know how much stock I put in this rumor, but Benchlife does seem to believe that AMD will be providing the GPU for this. Now, what architecture the GPU is, what the performance of this GPU is, and, well, you know, why AMD would do this is essentially money, of course. But it's just a bit weird. And this licensing deal between Intel and AMD has been murmured, rumored, and hinted at for some time um, in terms of what, you know, the two companies would get out of the licensing deal. Well, that's pretty much the rumor, really, isn't it? Like, what would happen? But from what I can tell, anyway, it appears that the GT2 graphics configuration is the thing that's really being hinted at in the processor lineup. So your guess is as good as mine whether this is going to actually be reality or not. I mean, technically speaking, I guess, selling your GPU technology to Intel is not exactly a bad thing. And from Intel's side of things, it would make an awful lot of sense because AMD's GPUs are essentially modular in design. What that basically means is that AMD are now creating their um, architectures in a way they can easily customize the silicon however they need to for their specific vendor. So this means much quicker turnaround time. As always, however, I would have massive grains of salt with at least some of this stuff, especially AMD's involvement. If you want to believe the Intel KB8G, fine. Um, HBM2, fine. Um, I will remain somewhat cautious on the uh, AMD involvement, however. Finally, um, let's talk about DDR5. So, it hasn't been long since AMD have ad adopted uh, DDR4, um, obviously with Ryzen, but JDEC um, have now decided to reveal plans for DDR5. So, what do we have with DDR5? Well, I don't think it takes me to tell you that it's basically faster memory speeds and also lower voltages. So, technically speaking, the highest clock speed that JEDEC allow before you start talking about overclocking DDR4 is about 2400 megahertz. Timings are about 15 to 18 for CAS. So, DDR5 is being labelled as twice as fast, which means, theoretically speaking, we could be seeing speeds of, conservatively, around 4800 MHz, which is absolutely bonkers. Now, presumably, if you want to be the safer side of things, because DDR4, you know, the standard clock speed for DDR4 is 2133, so we should, at the very minimum, see 20, uh, 4266 MHz for DDR5. But, do bear in mind, because that's impressive, but do bear in mind that DDR4 it scales much higher than that. In fact, there are some kits which are well over 4,000 megahertz. Like, I think the fastest is, don't quote me on this, but I think it's 4,266. But they're not exactly plentiful. Like, if you're wandering down to your local um, retailer, there's a good chance that they won't have them. And if you were to look on an online retailer, well, basically, I suggest you get a second mortgage, particularly if you want a larger um, density pack of uh, RAM. So, in other words, 
it's possible that we will see memory even higher than that, like the 5,000, possibly even 6,000 range, but who the hell knows, reality-wise. Now, considering that, of course, next-generation CPUs are becoming, well, more focused on multi-core, this makes an awful lot of sense. Because, yes, we have Ryzen with 8-core, 16 threads, but that's not the end of it. And, obviously, Ryzen Plus... Um, or Zen Plus to be more precise, you know, that's going to probably have an IPC gain of, let's say, 15%, 10% conservatively. Presumably, we're going to see clock speed increases. Presumably, that's, say, 10 to 20% minimum on top of what we've already got. So that's right there, 30 to 40% additional performance, which means that, obviously, RAM speeds are going to become increasingly important. And yes, Zen does really like additional memory uh, clock speed. Intel are doing much the same. We've got the Coffee Lake series and what else coming in the future. And don't forget that this is not going to come out yet. We're going to be looking at at least a couple of years before this becomes the mainstream. Oh, and one last thing. There's not that much information yet on these, at least compared to what there will be um, at JDEX Server Forum, which is when, presumably, we're going to start having a lot more information. So if you do want to know exhaustive amounts of information, for example, on TRP, on CAS latency, memory voltages, and all the other nummy nummy things in life, then I'll suggest tuning in on June the 19th. That's once again on this year. But I'm going to run off. I'm going to mosey on away, if you will. Uh, there is a lot of stuff coming up over the next couple of days. We are finishing off the Zotac review. Um, hopefully I need to write the script for that, so that should be up tomorrow. Um, I will be getting the full MSI review for the motherboard up in the next couple of days, as well as the interview with Neil Trevitt from NVIDIA slash uh, Kronos, because obviously he serves both parties. And, well, there's just a lot of other stuff coming up, so do definitely stick around with us. Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video, my friends. Don't forget to comment in the video um, comment box. That was the worst way I could have said that possible, pretty much. And uh, let me know if you want more camera stuff in regarding news stories, because some of you are saying, well, yes, you would like that, rather than just random gameplay. Others of you are saying, well, you know, seeing some dude talk on screen for, like, you know, 20 minutes or whatever is kind of... It needs to be broken up, is basically what some people are saying, which is also a fair point. So, yeah, let me know. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.